years ago, Kramer from Harvard Medical School linked galactose, that sugar, consumption with increased risk of ovarian cancer. To look for hints for this sugar might also affect fecundity, that is uh, fertility, if you like. His team compared published data from 36 countries on the rates of fertility, per capita milk consumption, and hypolactasia, that is low lactose, the adult inability to digest lactose. In February 1, American Journal of Epidemiology, they now report a correlation between high rates of milk consumption and waning fertility, beginning in women just 20 to 24 years old. You shouldn't become infertile at 20 and 24. You should be at your peak. The strength of that association and the rate of fertility decline grew with each successive older age group studied. In Thailand, for example, where they don't use dairy, for, because they are lactose intolerant, where 98% of adults are hypolactasic, they're lactose intolerant, average fertility in women, 35 to 39, is only 26% lower than peak rates. So you stay fertile for a long, long time at age 25 to 29. By contrast, in Australia and the UK, where hypolactasia affects only about 5% of adults because they keep the enzyme, because they have this history of milk consumption, average fertility by 35 to 39 is 82% below peak rate. What a tremendous difference. And the difference is the dairy. The dairy is the bad news. Cataracts, as we have seen, are linked to dairy products. There are many scientific publications to show that. Lactose intolerance, we'll deal with in a moment. Food allergies. Milk is one of the most common food allergies. If you have migraine, if you have asthma, we'll deal with them in a moment. The first product to look at is dairy. And that is the one that will not test positive in most cases. If you go for allergy tests, you will test positive to all the secondary allergies and sell them to the primary allergy. So this is one of the biggest problems in the world today. Toxins, like other products from animals, breast secretions contain contaminants, pesticides, drugs, and all kinds of problems, antibiotics, you name it. And uh, we've analyzed quite a few of these over our lifetime, and I'll tell you, the picture is not so hot. Lactase deficiency. That's the enzyme that breaks down the sugar lactose in milk. Now, the Danes are only 2% lactose intolerant. That means they cope with lactose. They can break it into glucose and galactose, but they don't cope with the galactose. They still have that problem. If it comes to the Finns, they're 18% lactose intolerant. If it comes to the Indians, 50%. The Israeli Jews, 58 Peruvians, 70 Black Americans, 70%. Ashkenazi Jews, 78%. If we go up, Arabs, 78%. Green Eskimos, 80%. Taiwanese, 85 Greeks, 85 Japanese, 85 Thais, 90 Filipinos, 90. African blacks, some say 90. Actually, it's more. That means they cannot tolerate lactose at all. So, in fact, only white Europeans can tolerate lactose, none of the others. In fact, African blacks are 95 to 100 percent lactose intolerant. The Zulu nation, almost 100 percent lactose intolerant. And as you go down the list, you'll see that only North American whites and white Europeans can tolerate lactose. Now, isn't it interesting that this group down here wants to dictate to the whole world up there that in order to be healthy, they must eat like them? And what happens? They all become just as sick as they are. That's what happens. So let's have a look at this lactose metabolism. We've been speaking about it. There's the sugar lactose. That's the one that you get in milk. And you break it down to glucose and galactose, and you need an enzyme which is called lactase. That enzyme switches off after weaning in every nation, and in whites, it only partially switches off. Is that clear for everyone? All right. 
The galactose, to break down that, you need to change it to glucose. We cannot use galactose. It's useless to us. So you need this enzyme, beta-galactosidase, and that enzyme is only produced until you're weaned, and you no longer produce it. So none of us have enough as we sit here today, and none of us can convert that adequately to that. And yet, if you look at your advertisements, they'll put the white ring around the black people, the white ring around the black people, around the white people, and even the cartoons get the white ring. Why? Because they want to induce you to drink milk. There's another American advertisement. Great for growing chicks. Got milk? Well, they should say there, great for ovarian cancer, great for infertility, great for, you know, dumb blondes too because it's not so good for brain development. They should put a sub-list over there. They don't put that on the advertisements. Here's a nice little cartoon that I quite like. Two little kids. 